Greetings, flesh creatures. It is I, Megatron. On behalf of TFYLP, I want to congratulate you for listening to the most refined collector podcast on this miserable little planet Earth. Yes. Here you'll find knowledgeable fans discussing every aspect of Transformers and beyond. Now, enjoy the show while I continue my path to complete conquest of all of you miserable biological entities. Predacons! Terrorize! Okay, so before my wife starts yelling at me again, let's film Cut the Tape. Welcome to Cut the Tape, starring me, Rick Alvarez. The only show for me, by me, and starring me. I've got a nice little assortment of things I want to open today. Let's start from newest to oldest. I'm going to show them to you real quick. Evergreen brand Transformers. Now, what is Evergreen? Evergreen refers to an idea that a property i.e. Transformers, will always make money. I don't believe there is such a thing as an evergreen brand. But, Transformers have been a while, around for a while. Star Wars has been around for a while. They make money. Doesn't mean that they've always made money and doesn't mean that things can't turn for the worst. I'm not saying I want things to turn for the worst. I'm just saying there's so much stuff. I having a little hard time keeping up with all the stuff and then trying to get vintage on top of that it's it's, it's it's crazy anyway so prowl you can go to walgreens and buy this and get a COVID shot do that do that you should do that next i got another thing here that uh i'm gonna open this is a toys r us exclusive Infernicus. This is a remolded version of Abomination from Transformers Prime. We'll get, we'll get into all that. We'll, we'll get into that. It's. I need to open this. We'll, we'll, we'll get into that. And finally, I've got a Target exclusive. Actually, I'm, I'm covering up the clearance sign. It, it was $4.98 on clearance. It's a Beast Hunters, Transformers Prime, Predacons Rising, Dawn of the Predacon, uh, Transformers uh, Prime, Cyberverse Bumblebee, uh, Generation 3, Smokescreen, and Cindersaur. Let's start with Prowl. So, Evergreen brand Prowl. These Transformers are... I don't want to say generic, but designed in such a way that they're an easy end to the brand. It's a generic prowl. It's not from G1. It's not from the movie. It's not from animated. It's not from Prime. It's it's just a prowl that... You, hey, I've got a prowl. W what line is he from? It's just prowl. That's what that is. So, I don't think I've actually opened any of these before. Mm, you know what? I think I've opened the Bumblebee. So, I've opened the Bumblebee and I've compared it to the, like the Big Lots dollar store Bumblebees, the big ones. But you know what? I was, it was only a matter of time before I got around to opening these. So, you know, I got one sealed. I got one to open. Check the boxes. Make sure there's no variants. Check the boxes for foxing. See which one is worthy of staying up on the shelf. And which one shall be opened. All right, so no instructions. Instructions are on the back. They don't even have start, change, change finish it's just numbers it's like f it just number them it's one through six and they like skip a number so it's like one two three four it goes to six like what happened to five i don't know it wasn't in the budget five wasn't in the budget so here he comes tied down 
Uh, some people say negatively that, oh, they're made cheap. Well, you know what? It's not that they're made cheap. It's made at a different price point. It's a different price point than something you would find for this size at, say, a Target. And so it has different articulation. Yeah, it'd be great if they'd go back and, you know, you could add a little swivel here and a little bend here in the hand or, two, or you know, the, the head does move. A little waist articulation. Yeah, but that's not the price point. That would all drive the price up. And this is a fairly large toy, right? Here. Compare this to this. This is, uh, where, what are these? These I've seen these range everywhere from like $14.99 to $16.99. These are 20 bucks if you're lucky, right? I mean, this thing towers over it. And you know what? Now that I'm looking at this, this is easy, easy potential to be repainted into Prowl. Uh, sorry, Barricade. Don't even give it a new HUD. Easy peasy. Look at that. Look at that. Does it pass the roll test? It passes the roll test. So, you say, oh, well, that's not Prowl. Prowl is like a sports car, Datsun. This is more like a modified, like a Mustang and an Impala had a kid. It's a generic car. It's a generic car. Don't worry about it. The size of these are cool. It's got the five millimeter pegs. Uh, do I have any five millimeter weapons here? Yet. It's got five millimeter pegs, hands. So you can put anyone's hands uh, weapon in there. And this is fine. There's nothing wrong with this. This is fine. The head, the head it makes a prowl. The head makes a prowl. And you, you don't even have to take that head and remold it. You can just straight up paint this as barricade. Boom. All right, Infernicus. So this is not something I remember that we pitched. Um. Oh, I, yes. All right. Now that I'm. All right. Back up. So now that I remember, we were pitching. I think Predaking. It was Transformers Prime around that era. Predaking was in the show, so we were te we were teasing Predaking, and I think we were teasing Predaking as like one. He's just one robot. He's not a combiner, and it was going to be the Dinobots versus Predaking, which actually never happened in the film. They never fought in Fernicus. and I is this the Autobot version? So in Fernicus. I don't even... Yeah, this is the Decepticon one. Yeah, so this is the Decepticon combiner. I remember when I saw the movie, it just kind of came out of nowhere. Like, oh. And the, the, the issue I have with the character in Fernicus is that it, it doesn't look robotic. Right? It doesn't even look like it's composed of metal. Because a robot can take any shape. And then it transforms, but it, it just... It looked too organic. It, it didn't look mechanical. I mean, they are living beings, but it... Maybe because it's black. That could be it. The black hides all the little minute details that you might see in the transformation sequence. Anyway, as I was saying earlier, this came from Transformers Prime Abominus. So, we started putting some Terracons into the Legends line right we didn't know that eventually we would make a combiner so i think the first one which was twin strike or sinner twin we made him and then we had to retroactively think all right where can we peg this guy into another toy for him to make a combiner that's how that happened and this is a remolded version of that toy 
of of all the guys of all the Terracons put together. So we have Inferno Con, Thrash, Skulk, Rupture, Gorge, and Glug. Lovely. This was a Toys R Us exclusive. And it comes with a little hologram Quintessa. This is the only Quintessa figure I believe that's ever come out. I don't think anyone's been asking for her in uh, Studio Series. It's got that Toys R Us smell. All right, we've got a little trading card. I'm gonna pop this open real quick. All right, so uh, it's got a trading card. You get a bunch of these cards, you put them together like old Garbage Pail Kids, like the back had an image that was larger, and then they all form a larger image of the film. We have what seems like a book of instructions. And we have, um, we have, we have one random foot that fell off, and it's black. Good luck trying to find where this foot goes. God damn it. Where the hell does this foot go? <sighs> All right. Let me try cutting this guy out. Let's see here. Can I move this? I can. By the way, you may have noticed that I've slimmed down. Yes, thank you. Thank you. I've cut out sugars, carbs, and alcohol from my diet. Trying to get back into bikini season. Of course, my bikini body requires several bikinis. Going to Hawaii next month. So that's cool. All right, what I like about this, A, it already comes combined. So you, you, you know, if you didn't want to mess with it, you don't have to. It comes combined. It looks like... Oh, here's where the foot goes. Woo! Nice. Now, will it pass the stand test? Yikes, yikes, yikes. Will it pass the stand test? Hey, success. It's standing on its own. Excellent. So Inferticus passes the stand test. It's got a new head. The head looks pretty similar to the film. And, uh, I mean, not bad for a repaint of the Terracons. Oh, so, you know, I'll, not that I want to harp on this, but the Terracons and Transformers Prime were the zombies because we had no idea that eventually we'd get the Beast Hunters and then we would actually make the Terracons from G1 and Beast Hunter style. And so we just didn't know. And he's got his big ass tail here. I have no idea where this plugs into. It's a sword. It's a sword. Gotta use your sword. I don't know where this sword's gonna go. It's a plug in here. Maybe. Maybe it goes there? I mean, from the picture, it looks like it goes there. So this is a case where I'm gonna have to play with this. I didn't wanna do that. I didn't wanna have to play with this, but now I'm gonna play with it. Anyway, for a Legends Combiner, this is the only one we've had in, in the modern era. It's the only Legends Combiner and as I said, it's a remold of Abominus. It's not bad. 
Not bad. It's got a good size to it. It's definitely going to tower over your other Legends figures. A lot of black on black color schemes, which I'm not crazy about. But this is kind of the real prize, right? Quintessa. And it looks fairly accurate to what you see in the movie. Quintessa. Little hologram looking Quintessa. Excellent. And finally, we're going to move on to Beast Hunter. So this guy is actually called Glug in this set. Cindersaur. So Cindersaur, of course, being from G1. Smokescreen, of course, being from the show. Uh, actually, last week I talked about Smokescreen and how he was one of my favorite characters and my, one of Mike Baylog's, who was on the brand at that time, one of his favorite characters. So when it came time to put a new character in the show, I'm like, Smokescreen! And it just by coincidence, the writer said, hey, what if this guy gets the Matrix and we set him up to be the leader instead of Bumblebee? It's like a bait and switch. So... Uh, this is the only way you can get smokescreen in... No, wait. Yes. This is the only way you can get smokescreen in his G1 colors. And then the only way you can get the redeco scene in the show with the number 7 based off the alternator's color screen, color scheme was the legend size that came with, I think, a ship. Fortunately, we never got around to doing a smokescreen repaint he came out so late in the line we never got around to doing the deluxe version with the number seven on it all right so he's got instructions for both guys there's card art back of the card transformers beast transformers prime beast hunters predacon rising long name long ass name Hey, buddy. You happy you're free? You happy you're finally free? I absolutely would have loved to have had the deluxe figure painted in G1 color schemes, too. Something about that G1 color scheme, man. It just does it for me, buddy. Something about it, Bubba. Just does it for me. I know I don't like to transform things on the show, but I'm a mark for the Dotson brothers. Uh, so I've owned three Dotsons in my life. I've owned two 300 ZXs, both 87. One was uh, white, the other was uh, dark gray. And then I've owned a 1982 280 ZX, which was... Um, was it an 82 or an 84? Actually, I think it was an 84. And it came painted like blue, blue streak. So it was blue on the sides, silver down the top. Had a huge ass spoiler, a nice front end kit. It was really nice. And there we go. This guy actually comes with a weapon. I don't recall this weapon being on the show. I just think it's a, uh, hey, let's make a weapon. And Smokescreen being a nice, lovable character. Of course, he's going to have a blaster with a big ass Bowie knife. Um, I forget who was the designer on this one. Maybe it was Lenny or... I forget who the designer on this one was, but they're like, hey, who can we repaint this guy into? And I'm like, Cindersaur. Duh. This actually really works. There's a story behind the Predacon symbol. So there are two Predacon symbols. The first one that you saw was the was the one that we paid to have design. And then we sent it around to the whole team. Uh, Aaron and I sent it to the whole team, said, hey, this is the, this is the symbol we're using. Do you have any input? No input came. All right, so we moved ahead. And then I get an email like a few weeks later from asshole Josh 
who uh, was the brand uh, design manager. I don't, I don't even know if he's there anymore. What, what a waste of space. So he emails me saying, hey, here's a product way. Hey, the team talked. We thought we should make a Predacon symbol. Here's a symbol. And that's how you get the alternate symbol. So I'm like, here's the email saying that we're this is the symbol and we're using it. He's like, yeah, but I didn't give input on that one. Yeah, but I sent you the email. I sent everyone the email. And so it was a big issue. He, he fucking cried like a baby over it. Fuck that guy. Anyway, you got to choose your battles. You got to choose what you want to fight for in that corporate environment. And ultimately, that was not a battle that needed to be fought by the IP team. You know what? You, you, you really want to make a stink about this? Have it. It's fine. It's fine. Go ahead. Have your symbol. It's fine. The other one's fine. This one's fine too. It's fine. Everything's fine. Anyway, we talked about Transformers Prime. We talked about the movie. We talked about what Evergreen was. And I uh, gave you my thoughts on product that's made for a specific pr price point. Don't call it cheap. It's designed to be at a specific price point and thus limit the articulation, the paint apps. Keep that in mind when you're an adult collector playing with it. A kid just sees a toy. And remember, 99% of these evergreen ones are going to end up in the hands of kids. The other 1% ends up in my basement. Anyway, get your vaccinations, wear your mask, wash your hands, be nice to people. Be nice to your neighbor, even though your neighbor who lives next door is an asshole and you wish he'd move. He's going to move eventually. Be nice to people. Be nice to yourself. And remember, there's always time to cut the tape.